Welcome back to the Armchair Meddler, where I review news videos usually of a sensational nature and I give you my opinion. Even though you didn't ask for my opinion, that's what makes me the Armchair Meddler. So today we are going to take a look at a high-speed pursuit. Uh, driver in stolen car leads CHP on the high-speed chase through LA County. Okay. So before we get into this video, I want to remind you that I have not watched this video previously, so I will be experiencing it along with you for the very first time. But before we do that, make sure you are subscribed and press that like button. Now let's not delay, let's get into the video. Once again, if you're just joining us on ABC7.com and our ABC7 streaming apps, Chris Christie up in Air 7 HD with a CHP Pursuit. Crossing into L.A. County, this all started in Riverside, Riverside County Sheriff's Department handing this off to CHP just a few minutes ago. Now three units right behind him as he refuses to pull over. Reportedly two people inside of the silver Toyota Corolla wanted for grand theft. And you see that nice sun from above. That is compliments of the L.A. County Sheriff's Department helping out here, trying to light him up. But he is refusing to pull over. In fact, he is all over the pavement, hovering between 70 and 90 miles per hour. So that Toyota Corolla is going to have a four-cylinder engine. And the top speed is probably going to be somewhere between 120, maybe 140. I don't know. One, 140 miles per hour might be pushing it. It's probably more like 120, especially since it's an older model. But I noticed that the CHP, they are staying right on this person's tail. Transitioning. Southbound, that's going to put him southbound 605, it looks like. Southbound 605 on a relatively uh, almost empty 605. Moving over to the right lane, maybe showing signs of another exit here, getting off the freeway, or perhaps, look at that, coming up really fast behind that car who basically cut him off there, and now he's looking for another opportunity to either move over to the right or just create some distance here. He's definitely going really fast, and you can see two people now in the front of that passenger vehicle heavily tinted windows on those side windows. Coming up on Rose Hills Road. Once again, three black and whites behind him. L.A. County Sheriff's helicopter pulling off of this pursuit. CHP now pulling in with their airship. A primary unit, secondary unit, and a third unit all ready to execute a felony stop if and when this comes to a conclusion, hopefully on the freeway. If not, they will, well, they will follow him right off the freeway. We'll see what happens here. In the meantime, he is still doing about 80 miles per, 80 miles per hour. Passing all the other traffic, whatever few cars there are out there. Again, a pretty empty 605. Closing in on 95 miles per hour.
Once again, shifting over to the right lane, really just using all of the uh, available freeway that he's got. But there's really no traffic to weave around, and he's not really showing any signs of getting off now since he's transitioned onto the southbound 605. Just trying to play a little game of cat and mouse here with that primary unit who's closing in once again, only about six. So the, the Corolla uh, clearly lacks power. Uh, yeah, the CHP units are going to be able to keep up with it all day. Uh, the only advantage that I could see that this Corolla would have is that it gets fantastic gas mileage. So this guy could be at it all night uh, driving this thing. And then perhaps also with it being so small, I'm sure it would corner better than these larger CHP cars. But of course... Obviously, the CHP is going to have unlimited resources, so it's not like this guy is going to be able to keep driving because he's not running out of gas. And, you know, C CHP, they're going to have replacements, so they'll be on his tail no matter what he does. Six or, seventh car, six or seven car lengths behind him. Two other units behind them, and... Uh, again, this all started in Riverside County, Riverside County Sheriff handing this pursuit off about 10 minutes ago to the California Highway Patrol. Apparently, there is some information that the suspect may reside in uh, the South L.A. area. <laughs> so that's interesting because this is a stolen vehicle, yet they know... Apparently, they, they know that this person probably lives in Los Angeles. So that's interesting. So I'm wondering if maybe they got a visual on the suspect and they recognize the person. Starting to make out some side damage there on that front right quarter panel. Front left quarter panel, rather. And you can see he's now holding steady in that number three lane. So starting to uh, slow down slightly. He was doing about 95 to 100 just a minute ago. Now about 75 miles per hour. Just passing Telegraph. And there's the exit. <clears throat> they should put him on the five, I think. Yeah, that's the five. That'll put him on the southbound five. South, uh, no. Is that south? Yeah, southbound five, southbound five. No, he got off at Florence. Bypassed the 5 freeway, exiting at Florence. Coming up on Florence Avenue, he's got a red light. And he's going through the red. Through the red, making a wild left turn there. Through the red light. All three CHP units following him through the red light. Under the 5 freeway now. Eastbound Florence Avenue, just underneath the 5 freeway. You can see him. Driving a bit slower now as he's on surface streets for the first time in this pursuit. Coming up on another red light. A little more traffic on Florence here. He might regret getting off of the 605. Had so much room to play with there. And now oh he is gosh. really boxing, boxing himself in. CHP coming up right behind him here. And he is continuing to drive really erratically through these intersections. Here comes the pit. Looks like the go-ahead has been given for a pit maneuver, and he is right on his tail. A little too fast for a pit. We'll put the real-time speed tracker up, and you can see we're clocking him at about 75 miles per hour. So he may be getting real close, but he ain't going to touch him 
until he slows down well below this. He's got to slow down, and now he's on the five freeway, so things can change here. Now speeding back up to about 80 miles per hour. Northbound 5 Freeway. Northbound 5 Freeway. Having a lot of luck with traffic so far. Another relatively empty northbound 5 freeway at about 100 miles per hour. But those triple digit speeds are about to slow down because there's going to be a few more brake lights here in the next couple of miles. Northbound 5 freeway, not a whole lot of traffic, but just a lot more cars to weave around. Coming up on Norwalk. Thank you. Uh, that looks off. He's going north, right? Oh. Oh, I stand corrected. He's actually on the southbound Whoa. side. Southbound side of the 5 freeway, cutting off that big rig, taking the Firestone exit. Southbound 5, southbound 5, getting off at Firestone, speeding right through the intersection here. Look at this. He's going to continue, continuing southbound 5. A wild maneuver there just to end up back on the 5 freeway, cutting off that big rig trailer. CHP still maintaining their distance here. You can see the flashing lights right behind him at 95 miles per hour. Indications that there may be a female driver behind the wheel here. And yet another exit getting off once again. Traffic pulling away from him. All right, he's got a decision to make here at Carmenita. Or is he going to go through it? No, he makes the northbound turn. Northbound turn onto Carmenita. A red light here. Oh, man, that was Trying close. to split those lanes. And he's getting back on the five, back on the northbound side of the 5 freeway. So we are now on the northbound side. I said northbound earlier. He was on the southbound side. He is now jumped over to the northbound side of the 5 freeway. And if he is indeed from South LA, this will put him in the general direction of where he may have originated from. But that is preliminary unconfirmed information. CHP still taking this as long as it takes but uh, again they brought this out of Riverside County so that's where they picked it up in fact the minute he crossed into LA County CHP basically took it over Riverside said you guys could have it So I just want to say that these speeds of 90 plus miles per hour up to 100, that engine just has to be straining because I have driven a Toyota Corolla uh, or actually uh, more like the, the Camry. Yeah, I've driven the Camry and to get it to an uh, older Camry and to get it to move this way, the, the Corolla especially has less power to get it to move that way. You really have to put your foot to the floor to get it to accelerate like that and that engine just has to be straining
continuing northbound side of the 5 freeway. Again, a silver Toyota Corolla fleeing the California Highway Patrol at a high rate of speed. This all started on the 60 freeway out of Riverside, ended up on the southbound 5. Now we're going northbound on the 5 freeway, heading back towards the L.A. Metro. And you can see he is continuing, or he or she, I should say, indications it may be a female driver, uh, refusing to pull over here, doing a lot of lane shifting. Hello, I'm Mark Brown, joining Chris Christie, uh, Chris Christie and Air 7 HD, as we continue to cover this pursuit involving the California Highway Patrol and a stolen car, believed to be a Toyota Corolla. You see the speeds there, pretty high, 84, 85 miles an hour on the northbound Thank 5 you. freeway. Chris Christie, uh, what is ahead at this point uh, of this uh, driver? Is there any traffic at all? Hey there, Mark. I'm back up with you, and we are uh, on the northbound side of the 5 freeway. A little bit of traffic coming up ahead of him here, but uh, so far, and I keep saying him, it appears there may be a female behind the wheel here, now doing triple-digit speeds and encountering some of those brake lights that I mentioned just a second ago. You can see a big truck now in front of her uh, and more traffic to contend with the further north she gets here. Uh, on the southbound side of the 5 freeway was a different story. Even on the 605, it was relatively empty ever since we've been on the northbound side of the 5 freeway, though. Things are starting to slow her down, and again, we just have information, preliminary information, that this vehicle may have originated in the South LA area. All right, and it's it's interesting to see the CHP getting so close to this vehicle. They don't normally pursue this closely, do they, when they're when they're on a freeway, especially at these speeds? They seem to be pacing themselves. There's times where I've heard them intentionally pull back on her a little bit, especially when there are other motorists in the vicinity, and then you'll see them close in on her a little bit, whether they can try and peek inside the vehicle here and there and try and get a little more intel. Now she's exiting the freeway coming up on, I believe this is going to be another freeway exit. No, that's Lindell Avenue. Coming up on Lindell here, Lakewood, Lakewood Boulevard, rather. Lakewood mm -hmm. Boulevard and a, no, a left. left turn. Left turn onto Lakewood Boulevard. Uh, but typically when they pull up right behind her, Mark, it seems like they're just trying to get a better glimpse. At one point, she was exiting the freeway really fast. I almost thought that he was going to try a pit maneuver because he pulled up right up behind her as she was exiting the freeway. But it turned out that was not to be, and it was going way too fast anyway. So now that we're on surface streets for only the second time here, we'll see how things play out. <laughs> Look at that jump in the curb here. Acting oh much more gosh. erratically. In fact, wow. this is a textbook what? of why they really would prefer oh that she stayed on the gosh. freeway. Wow. Now doing a wow, U-turn on Lakewood Boulevard, going the wrong way on Lakewood Boulevard. Wow. This uh, person is insane. That's a recipe for disaster. Right now, hopefully she'll get back into the... Uh, Shifting over, the yep, shifting over to the correct side there. So I just want to say, this person does not want to live to see another day. Or they just have no understanding of the consequences of their actions. Because that U-turn that they made, heading the, the opposite way against traffic, that is just insanely dangerous. And maybe getting back on the freeway. She's clearly making this up as she goes along. These all appear to be very random turns, random moves, another random U-turn, maybe looking for an opportunity to get back on the freeway here. Good spot for a pit right here too, isn't it? Yeah, and she slowed down just enough. That might have been uh, maybe one of their first real opportunities mm -hmm. because i got to be honest, she's been doing pretty... Uh, but she's been doing a pretty good clip ever since we joined this pursuit. In fact, at times approaching 100 miles per hour on the freeway, the driving on the surface streets has been a whole different story. Not entire, not exactly uh, record-breaking speeds, but just really dangerous maneuvers the minute she gets off the freeway. So this is the case where we say it so often, we much prefer, we along with the California Highway Patrol, much prefer to, you know, endure this pursuit on the freeway, regardless of the outcome, because it's just a much safer situation for everybody, despite the fact that there is traffic on the freeway, it's still safer than a surface street where you have, you know, pedestrians and all kinds of other variables. 
Yep, and now back on the freeway, the speeds are higher. Um, the, the, you, I think you called it in terms of uh, this driver, and you, the, the belief is that she is female, uh, is making this up as she goes along, uh, which is leading to you know this, this kind of wrong way stuff, which can be really dangerous. If you're improvising, you don't have a plan necessarily even where you're trying to get to, uh, that can be troubling. Uh, so approaching the 5 and 605 interchange, she can go either way. It looks like she's going for the 605. On and off the freeway here, going southbound, uh, away from South LA again. We were just kind of using that as a possible destination, but in fact, she is transitioning here. We'll see where this puts her. It does look like she's going to go back northbound on the 605. So you call the mark, getting onto the 605, going back north, basically doing a circle uh, using the local freeway system here. She's been on the 605 before. She had gotten off of the 60 freeway and had gone, had gone south southbound on the 605. Mm -hmm. uh, and now she's entering the northbound side of the 605. I apologize. My voice is on borrow time, Mark, but you can <laughs> clearly see she's now transitioning. And there comes that primary unit once again, mm -hmm. closing that distance behind her and uh, maybe, again, looking for a possible pit opportunity. All right. Well, there's a little more traffic in front of her now. Yeah, um, too busy for a pit that, there. Yeah. It's kind of hard to do that when there's other vehicles around. You don't want to hit the other vehicles. You don't want to cause uh, injury to anyone, including the suspect, uh, that we might add. Everybody wants to have this end with nobody getting hurt and with the suspect safely in custody and the uh, pursuing officers safely able to take that suspect into custody. Stolen car, do we know anything about anything else that might be associated with this? The original law was grand theft. We've observed very heavily tinted windows there that are making it very diff difficult to see in the rear, but the best information that we have from law enforcement is that there are two people inside the front of that, uh, that car. In fact, we've been able to visually confirm that. Uh, there is somebody in the passenger seat as well. Now, eastbound Telegraph Road, Getting on to Telegraph at, a, again, a very high rate of speed here for, for this area. And now a random left turn there. I think she even had the red light there. So just very concerning driving uh, the minute she gets off the freeway. Very worrisome. You saw that move earlier, getting onto the wrong side of Lakewood Boulevard, now pulling into a much more residential street. This is going to be, look at that, Flossmoor with a lot of cross traffic. Doing about 35, and 40 and miles per hour on what can't be more than a 20 mile per hour speed limit street. Right, and people who live in this area, if you are uh, in the area of Jersey Avenue and uh, Flossmore Road and Whittier or, or the few blocks around here, please stay in your homes. Uh, the danger here is if somebody is out on the street, uh, she could uh, uh, lose control of the vehicle at any time or something could happen. You don't want to be uh, out there when... Uh, when this vehicle's involved in this pursuit. Now back yeah, onto Telegraph Road. blowing all these reds. That was that container, that, that truck we saw as we got, as she got off the freeway. Passing yeah, on. a couple close calls here, and again, taking these left turns through the red light uh, and all at a pretty dangerous clip there. Now doing about 70 miles per hour on Telegraph, almost double the speed limit here, passing Pioneer on a relatively empty Telegraph Road. One thing about Telegraph is that it is largely an industrial road so if you had to pick a surface street this might be the one and uh, also a good opportunity in a case like this for a possible spike strip mm -hmm. if they could set up in advance and have the opportunity that might be something we can expect here wow the speeds are high and uh, you I, I rinse every time she gets to a point where there's a, a an intersection and hope that at least the light is with her uh, it was in this case it was in the last couple of cases it was when you talk about this high speed you don't want her going against a running a red at these kind of speeds because you know just the result could be absolutely catastrophic she's getting into the right turn lane let's see if she makes a right here if she continues straight continuing straight looks like she has a green light or had it chp now with their airship still overhead you can see that night sun occasionally coming off of her and then occasionally back on whether that's intentional or not could be sometimes very difficult that especially at a high rate of speed to keep that night sun steady but maybe they're just trying to take the pressure off slightly by taking that night sun off of her but it does perform several uh, uh goals and one of them is actually giving other motorists in the area uh, at least a 
So this being an older car, I've been thinking, okay, why would this person steal this car? So a couple of thoughts go through my mind. I'm thinking that either they're taking the car for a joyride or more than likely they, they were planning on using this car to commit some sort of other crime in it. So yeah, those are my thoughts on that. Blue, uh, that this is heading in their direction, aside from the lights and sirens on the ground down there, but still a relatively uh, slow night. And I say slow, I mean relatively empty night on Telegraph Road here, fixing for a right turn, and that's gonna be a right northbound turn onto Laurel Avenue into a, into a shopping center. Shopping center is, uh, what is it, almost 10 o'clock? It's 10 o'clock, basically. Uh, the shopping center. It's a Walmart. Be, it's oh, okay. It might be closed. Oh, oh they shoot. They're open. There they go. Oh, two, two oh, pa a passenger and the driver, Female both driver, running forward into Female the Walmart. Passenger. Both running into the Walmart. The vehicle keeps rolling, wow. and now we have a foot pursuit. Look at that. The oh, CHP man. officer trying to stop the vehicle. That car crashing into that post, and now they have to enter this Walmart with a whole different set of challenges here. Wow. Uh, obviously, they are prepared to use force, but there are shoppers inside of that walmart obviously and the uh the oh my god the opportunity obviously mm -hmm. for uh, collateral damage here is obviously severe so it's like they let's hope the that those two are not armed let's as, they, as let's they were uh, as they were running inside they uh grabbed it looked like they got really close to the driver it looks like that's her somebody's down, down there somebody's down no shoes yeah that might be the driver <laughs> uh yeah it looks like she's being apprehended right now all right, so that's the good. That's good. At least one person. The driver is hooked at this point. Now they're trying to get that passenger. I couldn't get a good description of him because it was, it was uh, uh, just a couple of seconds before the guy was back inside the store. Well, was inside the store, running away. Well, thankfully they only have to wor have to worry about him for the moment. And mm -hmm. as I as I look at the posture here, it almost appears as though the situation inside is. Uh, maybe well i don't want to speculate too much clearly that female driver is in custody mm -hmm. what's going on inside the store basically anybody i'm sorry that that female driver only got maybe 15 steps i mean that girl must be as slow as molasses i mean when she ran from that car that was very very slow yes as shoppers start to spill out these folks probably in line at the cash register when all of this occurred and now there is a, uh, presumably, either a search or a foot pursuit inside the store. Right. Okay, well, hopefully we'll get a result here pretty quickly. She did not make it inside the store. Uh, somebody was, somebody grabbed her. We've got two female CHP officers I'm now. Sorry. Had her down. <laughs> that one Had her in custody. They're going to put her up against the car and do, I, I guess, a secondary search now. Uh, but uh, let's go, let's keep an eye We're on We're going to do a loop here, Mark. I, I've got information come from our assignment desk that the male passenger has made his way through the store towards the rear of the Walmart, mm. and we might see some activity uh, in, the, uh, in those loading docks or in that receiving section there mm. in the back of the store. So we'll see what entrances or exits are back there. It looks like there is some CHP activity in there. Is we have somebody. There Let's, he is. Yep, I saw an officer holding up. You probably did too, the same time I did. But an officer holding up and looked like four fingers. Yeah, uh, code which four. Means code four, which means uh, things are under control here. But look how he's far hiding he got. behind that truck there. Yeah, he was trying to basically fled right through the store. Uh, pretty smart of him. Came out the other side of the Walmart in the rear near the loading docks here and was looking for a hiding spot. <coughs> But it looks like they were able to keep up with them. Perhaps even with the help of maybe even people inside the store or employees. Who knows? It'll be interesting to see what actually happened in there. But in any event, I'm sorry, Mark. I'm being told that witnesses were actually uh, following him back there, pointing in the rear of the store. And mm -hmm. that's apparently how they were able to rendezvous with the suspect here in the uh that back parking lot there all right well uh that's thanks to uh, the cooperation of the public the folks the customers in walmart doesn't uh, take a lot of detective work if you're a customer you see somebody running in the store being pursued <laughs> by the police you say there he goes and uh, they know where to go and they found him interesting that he got all the way out of the back of the store i used to, to work in grocery stores typically the back is locked closed and locked now why are they running in this direction this There's a report 
I've just heard it. There's a report that somebody else is hiding. Hmm. Uh, somebody else is hiding in a different area, whether they are connected. Okay, so that's interesting because I could have sworn I only saw two people jump out of that car. To that vehicle, there's another person being detained. Wow. Another person, de another person being detained, and now you have to wonder, and perhaps we'll have to go back and re-rack that video as this pursuit came to an end in front of the Walmart. Uh, this almost looks more like the suspect that I remember seeing, but you know, mm -hmm. your eyes can play tricks with you. It all happens so fast. And uh, that other suspect in the rear of the store may, poss may possibly be the wrong guy. I don't know. Okay, well, we'll find out, because uh, that is interesting. Uh, I only, we, we only saw two people get out, and it's not like the, you know, we, we followed the car for a second or two while, it, while the CHP officer uh, uh, tried to stop it, and then it ran into a, a, a parking a post there. So there was nobody else left in that car that could have run out without them chasing them. We saw two people get out, so maybe they do have. One of those people was, is the wrong, is the wrong uh, guy. Yeah, I think, let's go ahead and, uh, Rob, let's go ahead and re-rack that video really quick and see exactly uh, what happened here because I think we'll get a better look now. Gray pants. Look at that. Light a white shirt, pants. light pants. Looks like light gray pants. You're right. There's definitely the female driver that yes. was taken into custody. No sign that anybody else got out of that vehicle as far as I could tell. No. And uh, I All don't right. know which suspect actually fit that description. I'll have to go back now and I think the first guy matched the description better with the pants. It doesn't. I'm not sure about this guy here. Um, the first guy almost appeared a little, almost I want to say a little too heavy. Set, yeah. But this might be. I want to get a better look at those pants because they're. You mentioned that they're very light gray pants. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, I don't know. The person I saw looked a bit younger, but again, it's difficult to tell here. Can we re-rack uh, the, 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 the end of the pursuit again? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, one more time, Rob, if you can. We'll go ahead and... Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, this guy's wearing a hoodie. Unless he grabbed okay. a hoodie off the rack in there and, and tried to blend in. I don't think that's the guy. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm almost wondering if either of those people are the mm -hmm. uh, passenger, to be honest with you, but the first one, okay. Uh, yeah, it looks more like, the, well, it's hard to tell. It doesn't look like this it guy is hard to tell. That we're looking at that, that, that we were just over. Um, is the other one already yeah. in a patrol car? That's yeah, that question. guy's got dark mm -hmm. pants and a hoodie on, so I don't think that's the guy. Couldn't have changed clothes that quickly, and, right. and frankly, he looks like he's got more hair than the other guy. I agree. That we saw jumping out of the car. So that may just be a different sort of situation. They do still have him in handcuffs, though, which is interesting. So that first suspect is in a car. Mm -hmm. Another suspect now being detained and placed into a patrol car. And it'll be up to, up to these uh, officers now to figure it out, just to give you an idea of where we are here. Uh, And I'm losing, I've just lost my uh, my monitor, guys. I apologize, Mark. All right, yeah, no problem. So, uh, yeah, as you were mentioning, there, there are one female, two males now that have been detained. One of them, from our vantage point, does not match the description of the guy seen bailing from the passenger side of the car. One of them pretty much did, although by, he, we can't compare him now because he's inside of a, a police vehicle. Those are the people that got that, that, that got out of the car. The woman running barefoot tackled pretty much immediately before she got into the store. The male got inside the store, and then one person... Okay, so that's, that's pretty funny to me. You're going to run from the police, and you're going to do it without shoes. Okay, yeah, that's going to work out was uh, detained in the rear of the store, another off to the side a little bit. Uh, we, we saw that, yeah, here's, here's a different, this is a different guy. He's got it's more a hair. Guy. Yeah, it's a totally that different guy. That is not guy. him. That's uh, not him. That's not the guy that jumped out of the car. So there, he may be, it's he may have other troubles. pointing but. out here that when somebody runs through a Walmart and everybody else starts scattering, multiple people likely came through all different exits of the store. It would mm -hmm. not be surprising at all, considering all of the confusion 
uh, during the commotion that uh, there are now multiple people looking for a spot to hide. You never know what's actually, uh, you know, happening. It could be an active shooter. It could be any number of situations. You're just running for your life in many cases. So I think the confusion is very understandable here. Mm -hmm. I think it's clear that that second suspect is not the suspect that we are, uh, that we were focused on. I think that, uh, if anything, that first suspect uh, in the white shirt may have fit the description more. But I, again, I, I, I now would have to see that one more time to mm -hmm. see if those pants matched up, or it could very well be the fact that, uh, or the possibility that maybe there's another outstanding suspect here. Yeah, that would be uh, strange, but you know, stranger things have happened. <laughs> there's all kinds of weird things that have gone on. So, you know, uh, we, we, we do see the foot bail, and clearly uh, the female driver, the male passenger, the male white, uh, looks like white sneakers, light gray pants, white t-shirt, somewhat heavy set, uh, closely cropped hair, uh, who got out. Uh, the car I should crashes. mention that CHP, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say that CHP is being assisted here by the Whittier Police Department, who has basically surrounded this entire Walmart in pretty, uh, pretty dramatic fashion here. They've done it in a pretty short amount of time. A lot of units down there, and uh, they are now assisting CHP. This is the Walmart at Telegraph and Painter Avenue, by the way. Mm -hmm. All right. So what, what we do know is that the posture of law enforcement here seems to have uh, gotten a lot more calm, a lot more uh, 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 indicative of this whole thing being over. The question is how we're going, how we or they are going to sort between the two men that are now in custody and whether this person is connected in some way or whether he was uh, an, uh, an innocent bystander, or whether he is involved in something else that we don't know anything about. Um, you know, stranger things have happened. There looks like they're going through a backpack that he had, that he has with him, or some sort of a something. Uh, but anyway, very peculiar. Yeah, the, the chase has ended. No one has been hurt that we know of. We haven't been inside the Walmart, but uh, it appears <laughs> nobody's been hurt. The posture of law enforcement indicates it's all over. And uh, it looks like Whittier is where this pursuit has ended after quite some time and some dangerous uh, driving on city streets and freeways. Uh, Chris Christie and Mark Brown reporting for ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Thanks a lot for watching, and uh, we'll be on the air at 11 o'clock. Hope you'll join us. Wow, so I did not see this one ending the way that it did. That was something at the end. Uh... The chase into the Walmart and the woman without the shoes. You're going to run from the police and not wear shoes? Uh, you're going to run barefooted? That just does not make any sense. I mean, a lot of what happened, especially on the surface streets, made no sense. But this chase, that was pretty incredible. But anyhow, yeah, we're going to wrap up this episode of the Armchair Meddler. Once again, thank you for watching. If you can, please subscribe. Also, press that like button and hope to see you on the next episode.